Hello, everybody. Welcome to Cheryl's Organic Food Forest. In this episode, I'm going to share with you how my muscadines are doing, my grapevines, my hugo culture, and also how I treat aphids in my hugo culture. Wrapped around this garden bench is muscadines. Noble muscadines. I have two plants planted on either side of the bench. And they're doing really good. As you can see right there, I'm showing you some of the clusters. I planted these last year, and I only got one cluster of grapes. I made a video on it, if you want to check that out. So I'm hoping that uh, I get more this year. I'm zooming in on the uh, clusters of grapes, and I, my intention is to bag them up like I did last year uh, to keep the birds, squirrels, and other pests from eating them up. We have quite a few clusters compared to last year. Now I just want to show you my organic sweet potatoes that I'm growing from a one potato that I found that was sprouting in my pantry. And here are my Concord grapes. I have three vines. I planted them all last fall, and I was just really shocked that they're putting on grapes. I wasn't expecting any grapes until next year. So I tied them up, and I'm trying to grow them like a grape vineyard. And as you can see, the leaves are getting really big, and I am going to back this fruit up too. I like how the leaves protect the um, clusters of grapes from pests. And right now, I'm showing you some echinacea seeds I sowed, as well as board seedlings that I grew in my grow room, and I transplanted them in the ground. And that's my Russian uh, comfrey that I use for fertilizer, and a pecan tree right there. That's a volunteer. Uh, you're also looking at the uh, early signs of asparagus, and those are artichoke seedlings I grew in the a grow room and I put my hostas plants that I left in containers all winter. I put those in the ground this morning and I pruned back the Texas Star hibiscus, the red ones that are behind the uh, hostas plants and that's some more comfrey. And I am going to do some other methods of using the comfrey because it really stinks. Right there, that is the uh, Mexican petunia. And what I was saying about the comfrey, when you make the tea, it stinks. I'm just going to use the drop and, chop and drop methods this year. Now, right here are my pencil size cuttings of uh, Thompson Sealant's grapes that I grew. No clusters on them yet, but I'm very hopeful. Here are several plants that I bought for 50 cents and a dollar that were on life support at Lowe's. These mums are coming back. But as I examined them a little bit closer, I noticed some ants. And where there are ants, guys, I'm telling you, nine times out of ten, you will see aphids. Because aphids farm ants. Ants. They like the gooey, sticky uh, liquid that aphids excrete and they love it because it's yummy and so i need to take care of that now right what i just showed you there those are jerusalem artichokes i'm growing them from for the first time and i also planted some uh texas star white hibiscus seedlings in this hugo culture now this hugo culture was huge it was real high right there <coughs> is where how high it was in all the tree branches crepe myrtle um, what have you have really broken down over the last two years. So I'm really happy about that because I know that they're making some great soil. Okay, so I'm back out here in the Hugo culture. And as you can see, there's already a ladybug there. Actually, it's several, several mating right there. And they're on the case because there are aphids all over here. So the first thing I'm going to do is wet the plants down and I'll be right back. Okay. So I'm washing the plants down. I misspoke earlier. I meant to say ants farm aphids. 
I think I said it vice versa. And by the way, those hostess plants that you're looking at, I only paid a dollar for them at Lowe's. They were on life support too. And now I'm going to attempt to release some ladybugs while I'm holding this. I'm coming mm -hmm. out. I out. want the world to know. Yeah, eat those aphids ladybugs. I'm coming out. Not too, not too ladybugs. They were in a refrigerator, so uh, the cool temperatures make them kind of lethargic. But as it warms up, the bugs will flip over and go to work on these aphids. And I'm gonna go around here, step over some plants. And I'm, I'm gonna some more coming out to aphids. eat the aphids up. Ladybugs will eat now, the aphids up. I could easily just spray neem oil, but it's getting ready to rain again. We're going to have a lot of rain for the next week. So, let's just use the A. Oh, um, I'm trying to say. Uh, ladybugs. And there's still quite a few in there. And that's enough food in there to last them a few weeks. So, I'm going to put these back in the fridge and release some more tomorrow. Okay, the so ladybugs are awakening and moving around and they'll find their aphids very soon. I see a lot of them there. And this little bag is going back in the refrigerator as soon as I let this one out. I purchased 4,500 ladybugs on Amazon.com. Where you going? <laughs> As always, I appreciate you watching my video. If you like this video, Please hit the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you for watching. Bye now.